The way we built our integration is there's three components to the integration. There's QuickBooks, which you can see here. There's Sugar, which you can see here, and you may or may not have seen Sugar before, but this is the home screen in Sugar. And then lastly is the QuickBooks Web Connector, which is up here. And the QuickBooks Web Connector gets installed in any computer running QuickBooks. And, uh, and it's the thing that keeps everything in sync. So I'm going to start with the sugar portion of this. Now this is the home screen. There's a lot of, this screen is a little busy because there's a lot of information on it. But really the cool thing is, is when you first log into sugar, your home screen is what appears. And what we have here are some things that we thought would be interesting to us. For example, we have our top account list in Sugar. And so you can see this is all data that came in from QuickBooks. And we can see Christy is my top account. Her year-to-date sales are $52,000 and so on. Um, in addition, you can see other types of CRM data. You know, these are calls that I need to make that are scheduled for me. Here's some key leads down here that are important for me. You know, one of the nice things about Sugar is if I don't like the way this looks, if I think calls are more important than my top accounts, I can just drag this up here and it just changed that for me that easily. If I don't want to see what my calls are on my home screen, I could just click this X and that goes away. And you can make the screen look uh, a lot cleaner with a lot less information. You can also add graphs and reports and other things on here. And so, um, let me do this. So I want to start on our administration screen and just show you briefly how the integration gets set up. So this is our QuickBooks integration, Sugar QuickBooks integration page. When you first install the integration, this is the screen you need to go to to set it up. We try to make this as really as simple as possible. So you enter in a product key, which we give you. It tells you when the integration expires. You enter in where your Sugar is installed. So this is the URL where it's installed. And pretty much once you've done that and you've installed the web connector, you're good to go. There's a basic configuration screen now that you can go to, and it asks you a few key questions. And we tried to put a lot of information on the screen to make it easy and obvious about you know what what each of these functionality, whether each of these functions means. So the first question is, which is your master system? When there's a conflict between the two, which one is going to win? So most people would want it to be QuickBooks, but this is like if there's different addresses in Sugar and QuickBooks, which one do you want to be the master? So in this case, we're going to say QuickBooks. Second question says, when you enter quotes or sales orders in Sugar, where do you want it to go in QuickBooks? They can go to estimates or sales orders. The third question says, when you're entering a quote in Sugar, there's a field there that's called the sales stage. And that's what determines whether it goes to QuickBooks or whether it just stays in the CRM software. And so we're telling it, if you change the stage to closed accepted, send it to QuickBooks. And this will come back up a little later. We'll see. There's different ways to sync inventory items. And then lastly, you tell it which synchronizations are active. So we have checkboxes here. We have accounts and customers, quotes going to sales orders, sales history, and product catalog. If you don't, and inventory items. If you don't want a sync to be active, you just uncheck it. And it doesn't sync. And that's really it for the basic configuration. As you'll see, we have a couple advanced tabs here that have all kinds of other stuff. But really, for the basic user, this is all you need to do. So with that, let's go into one of our accounts here in Sugar. And we're going to pull up Christy, because she's a good account. So this is Christy Abercrombie. She's an account in Sugar. She's also a customer in QuickBooks. All this data here came in from our sync in QuickBooks. And then down here, you'll see we have sales history, all the invoices in QuickBooks related to this account. Now, just to give you a flavor for how the integration works, you'll see Christie's address is 100 West Larry Bird Road. Now, we're, you know, we're, we're, I don't know about the rest of you on this call, but we're Laker fans, and that Larry Bird Road thing is a little offensive. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Christie here in QuickBooks. And let's change her address from Larry Bird Road to be 999 Magic Johnson Oops. Parkway. And of course,
we sent to Los Angeles. Okay, and I'm going to do that. And what I'm going to do is, so if we waited 10 minutes, I would expect that address to be updated, but we're not going to wait. I'm just going to manually launch this integration so it'll run. And so at some point, now we're back in Sugar, at some point I would expect this address to change to magic. We'll come back to that. So while we're waiting for that, let's scroll down here, and we can see here's all the sales history related to Christie coming in from Sugar. And you'll see it's got the invoice number, the sale date, the due date, if there's a PO number, total amount, and then it indicates whether the invoice has been paid or not. And if I drill down into one of these invoices, so let's go into invoice number 1100, it gives me all kinds of more information about that invoice. Here's all of the header information. It's got sales tax, sales tax rate, a transaction number, the shipping address, everything else. And then down below that, there's the line items. So we can see there was a wood door bought, there were some custom cabinets, there were some hardware brass hinges, and so on. As I said, this is really cool because um, you know you get all this data available to you in your CRM software wherever you are. You know, if you're on the road, you can go to the web, the URL where Sugar is, and you can have access to all this information. Let's go back to Christy, and we'll notice her address has already changed. She's now at 999 Magic Johnson Parkway. So that's an example of how quick the integration works and how quick it can work. Um, the next thing to take a look at is uh, we're going to enter in a quote in Sugar and have it go into QuickBooks. But before we do that, let's just take a quick look at the inventory. So I'm going to pull up um, the inventory screen. And the inventory in Sugar is called the product catalog. And so this is a product catalog. And this is just a list of the items that are in Sugar that came in from QuickBooks. And so you'll see there's uh, cabinets, and it has whether it's an inventory type, a non-inventory type, a service, whatever it is. You notice material and color and size are custom fields that were set up in QuickBooks, and they came into Sugar. And then there's a quantity on hand, cost, list, and the standard price. And this is just, this is just sort of a list view of the items. You can drill down and see more details about each item in Sugar. But this is just to give you a feel for all the items that came in from QuickBooks. So now, if we were going to go enter a quote into Sugar, I'm going to say create quote. This is the basic quote entry screen in Sugar. So you can give it a subject. So let's just say this is a holiday order. The quote stage is really important. That's what we talked about when we were setting up the system. That determines whether this quote gets synced into Sugar, into QuickBooks. And so if we leave this as draft, it will just stay here in Sugar and be something that salespeople can work on, but will never end up in the accounting system. But we're going to change just to say close accepted, which is what we told our system would send it to QuickBooks. I'm going to say this is valid till the end of this month. I'm going to pick my customer. Let's take Christy. Notice her address is Magic Johnson Parkway. And now let's put in a couple line items. So I'm going to start typing a line item, and we'll make it, we'll make it uh, about five cabinets. And let's see what else we can do here. How about a light pine? And you'll notice uh, it's subtotaled here. It calculated tax. The tax rate is San Domingo. The tax rate tables come in from QuickBooks, so all of that synchronizes. Gives you a grand total tax and a, and a total. So I'm going to save this order. Let's, let's give it a PO number 13456. And I'm going to save that. So now let me just quickly, again, within 10 minutes that would show up in QuickBooks, but I'm just going to manually launch that sync. And in a minute we'll go take a look at that order showing up in, in QuickBooks. So while we're waiting for that, I um, wanted to show you a quick the quick screen of how the mapping works. Now, again, you may or may not have to go into this screen, okay? But there's a function down here that says QuickBooks and Sugar CRM field mapping. And all this does is it allows you to point fields in QuickBooks to fields in Sugar. And so 
It already comes with all these mappings in there. As I said, there's nothing you have to do unless you want something custom done. So for example, if I go into my inventory items, over here, I could pull up my, my QuickBooks field list. Let's say I want the color here. Over here, it pulls up my sugar list. And I go, OK, here's my color there. And I click Add, and it would sync them together. Now, you notice I already have that here. But all you do is click Add, and basically from that point forward, that sync will now be in effect. We tried to make this very straightforward to use, and uh, hopefully that shows up here. It's a fairly straightforward thing. And as I said, you don't have to do it. But for those of you who are more technically inclined or have a lot of custom fields, you can do this without programming. You don't need us to do it. It's all something you can do on your own side. So let's go back and take a look at our uh, holiday order. And here it is. And you'll notice we pulled this order back up that we entered in. It now says here in the description, QuickBooks sales order number 7024, which means it made it into QuickBooks. And we're back on uh, Christie's screen. And here we go. Sales order number 7024. If I double click on it, it has Christie on Magic Johnson Parkway. It has our line items. It has the San Domingo tax rate and the grand total. And so that's how you would send a sales order from uh, Sugar into QuickBooks. And really, that's the basic functionality of, our, of the integration. The rest of this is all sugar stuff. So you'll see, you know, we're back on this home screen. We created a collections dashlet here that lists the, the people who owe the most amount of money in the system. And again, this came from QuickBooks. So each of these customers has a big balance. If I want to scroll through this, I just hit the arrow here and I can see other people. It's a great thing to be able to use. If I want to drill down on this customer and see more about him, I can say, oh, I want to take a look at Robert and just click on him. You know, and there's Robert. You know, and there's that open invoice that's on the list, 14,510. It's not paid. That's why there's a big open invoice there. Um, and I think, uh, Adrian, we're, we're in a good place. I think we've gone through the key functionality.